that will be what our, our main peak pose is. But we'll, we'll move a little gently up into that point and then a little gently after. So you might sweat depending on if you want to take your flows or if you want to rest. Um, just be very mindful with your body and what your body's telling you today. So let's get started. We're going to begin today in, in child's pose. Just spread the knees wide, let the toes kiss, but not overlap. You want to spread the knees a little wider. Your, your chest and your belly have more room for lying down. So here, and then rest your third eye, your forehead, on your mat. Extending your hands out, palms are facing down. And just resting into the forehead. Noticing how your body feels how your mind is, how your heart is. And even though we let these, these thoughts and observations come and go, hold a little bit onto them so we can know how to move forward. So if we need to rest, rest if we need to pay attention to a certain area of the body a little bit more, just be very mindful with our practice. And our intention today is to move like a goddess. So moving with strength, confidence. If you want to choose something else for your intention, you can do that as well. Let's take about three more breaths here. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. And then the breath rise in the back. And fall into the belly, into the chest. On the next inhale, rise up into the hands and knees, moving straight into cat cow, so finding your tabletop. Wrists are beneath the shoulders, knees are beneath the hip bones. So move the knees in just a little bit in line with the hips. And then inhale, drop the belly down, arch the spine, shoulders back. Exhale, tuck the chin into the chest, puff the back up. Really press into your feet so the weight is not so much on the knees. Inhale, open the heart, pressing into the palms, the fingertips protecting the wrist, and exhale. Moving with the breath here, preparing for our flow. So that's with the breath. Take about two more. And last one. And exhale. And after this, finding a flat back. So moving slow, pull the belly in. Reach the crown of the head forward so the gaze is either right in front of the fingertips or down. Try not to drop the head or even look out. We're pulling the belly in, extend the left leg up and back, and then the right arm. We'll inhale here, and then exhale, tap the knee to the elbow, really curl through the spine. Inhale, exhale, tap. Inhale, and exhale. Good. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale, hold, squeeze. Keep pressing into the left hand. And then inhale, lengthen and hold. Pull that belly in. Then exhale, drop it down. Same thing on the opposite side. So right leg back, left arm up. Inhale, lengthen, pull that belly in towards the spine. Then exhale, tap. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. You can let your breath be audible, find that ujjayi breath. Or you can just let it be natural. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Hold. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then exhale. Lengthen. Hold. Good. Exhale. Lower all the way down. Walk your hands out and come all the way down into the belly. Keep the hands underneath the shoulders. I'm going to move through a few low flows here. So press your feet and your thighs down, shoulders back, elbows hugging in towards the ribs. Inhale, lift up cobra, belly in, back squeezing, and then exhale back into child's pose. And moving again. So inhale, come up, exhale, lower down, keep the shoulders back, inhale, lift up, cobra, and then exhale back, downward facing dog. 
or child pose. Two more low flows like this. So inhale, come forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. Then exhale, either downward facing dog or child pose. Last one. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. And then this time we'll all exhale back to downward facing dog. Your first or maybe your third downward facing dog of the day. So using this here to lengthen from the tailbone up and back. Strengthening the shoulders, pressing into the fingertips, into the palm. And we'll bend one knee and then the other. So it'll probably be our longest downward facing dog of the day. So if you need to drop back down to child's pose, but last time you can do that. And then sway the hips side to side. See what that feels like. Engaging those shoulders. Pull the belly in, reach that tailbone up and back. But inhale, reach the right leg up and back. And then place it in between your hands. Drop the back knee. So low crescent lunge, inhale, lift up. Press into both feet and engage this left leg. Make sure you're not just dropping into it. There's strength and flexibility involved. So the gaze is forward, the hips are forward, both feet are facing forward. Drop your hands, and then exhale back down, we're facing dog. Inhale, extend left leg up and back. Use your belly, try to keep the hips high as you bring it forward. Drop that knee, put the foot in between the hands, and left up again, low crescent lunge, Anjani Asana. Press into that back foot. Knee is light. Good. Exhale, drop the hands. And then downward facing dog. Take one full breath in your downward facing dog. Then rise up onto the tippy toes. You try to keep the hips high as you tiptoe forward. Belly is in. Belly coming to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Uttanasana, drop the crown of the head down, holding here. So trying to be a little light on the heels. The weight of the body is in the ball of the foot. Toes are light. There's still weight in the heel of the foot, but they're light. So that's reminding us to press forward, keeping our, our hips high above the ball of the foot instead of sinking back into the hips. Breathing into the hamstrings. Shake your head yes, shake it no. Good morning, hamstrings. And pull the belly in as you roll up one vertebrae at a time. Reach the arms all the way up, reminding yourself of the strength, the fierceness, the goddess in you. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Drop the hands, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, Uttanasana. And then inhale, rise up. We'll do that again. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, full Uttanasana. And inhale, either roll up through the spine or find a flat back as you rise up again. Inhale. Exhale, hands, heart center. Adding on. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Drop the hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Step back into a high plank or lower the knees. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Upward facing dog or cobra. Shoulders back, elbows in. Back of the body is working. Exhale, downward facing dog. Extend the right leg up and back behind you. Place it in between your hands. Warrior one. Lift up. Warrior one. Good. Hips are forward. Really bending into that right leg. Press it into the outer back foot. Drop the hands. And then kick that right leg up and back again. Good. Swing it right in between your hands once again. 
That foot rotates out. This time we want your two. So when will the arms open? Look over that right knee. Make sure the toes are forward. Arms are extended. Gaze over that right middle finger. Flip the palm. Then exhale for reverse or peaceful warrior. You can drop the left hand down. Or you can even find a half bind. into extended side angle, drop the right elbow down, and extend the left arm up. Either staying here, or you can come all the way down. Try to keep the hips stacked, meaning that left hip stays on top of your right. Really press into that back foot. Good, left hand drops, that back heel lifts it up. So you're a high lunge, twist, reach the right arm up. Right hand comes down. Inhale back into a high plank or drop the knees. Exhale, lower all the way down to Chaturanga. Inhale, lift up, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Let it go. Inhale, reach the right leg up and back. Swing it in between your hands. Left foot comes forward to meet it. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands, heart center. Same thing on the opposite side. Pull the belly in, press down into your feet. So strong Tadasana to start you off. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. This time, step your right foot back first. Find either your, your full plank or your half plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, up. Strong lower body. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Extend that left leg up and back behind you. Swing it in between your hands, warrior one. Back foot rotates out 45 degrees and lift up. Bending deep. If you need to take a little bit of a modi modification, walk that back foot in and up. Don't bend that left leg as much. So press evenly into both feet, hips are forward, watch that left knee, make sure it stays stacked over your toes. Now drop your hands down, and then inhale, swing that left leg up and back again. Good, like coming into warrior two, so the left foot comes back forward, back foot rotates out, and then windmill the arms up. So the tailbone stays down, instead of back, stays down, left knee is open, Breathe. Reach all the way through those fingertips. Strong upper body as well. Then flip your palm. Exhale into peaceful reverse. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, extended side angle. You can rest your, your elbow here, but still that right side of the body. You're lifting it strong, or you can come all the way down. Keep the hips open. And car roll that right hand down, the back heel lifts up. High lunge twist, extend left arm up. Take a vinyasa or come to downward facing dog. If you vinyasa, inhale, exhale lower. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, downward face. Three breaths. Let it go. Let the gaze come back towards your knees, your thighs, or even your belly button. Strong shoulders. Send that left leg up and back. Swing it in between your hands. And then this time the right foot comes up to meet it. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands, heart center. So looking towards the left side of your mat, we're just gonna step the left foot up and back, bring your hands to your hips, and then turn towards the left side of the mat. The outside of the feet parallel to the edges of the mat. So you might feel a little pigeon toed. Pull the belly in, push the tailbone down so you're not arching the back. Pulling everything in and line with the tailbone. Bring your hands to your hips. Belly in, and then extend forward, long spine, 
and drop the hands in line with your feet. We'll do a few different versions of this. So your hands can come in line with your feet and drop the crown of the head down. Really press into the outside of the feet, maybe even lean forward just a little bit so you're not dropping back into the hips. Now bring your hands back to your hips, pull the belly in, lift, 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 press into your legs. Nice. Now we'll go walk the toes outward about 45 degrees and then sink down into the hips. Our first goddess pose. Tailbone is down, knees are open in line with the toes. So a lot of times our knees wanna collapse here, keep opening them. We're gonna reach the arms out and up. So strong arms. Like I said, we'll do a few versions of this. Holding. You can rock a little. I might take away from the, <laughs> the intensity of it, but here, reminding ourselves that we're strong, fierce goddesses. Got it. And lift up. We'll go walk the, the right toes so they're straight forward, coming into triangle. The back foot comes in 45 degrees. Tailbone stays down. Inhale, extend forward, and then exhale, trikonasana. So it doesn't matter how far you go. You want that left hip to stay open. Micro bend in those knees so they're not completely locked. Micro bend. Maybe the gaze looks up towards your left hand. Press into both feet as you lift up. Inhale, exhale, reverse triangle. Reach that left arm, the right arm up, that left arm down. Feel the length in the right side of the body. Good, coming back into the Kali Goddess. So we go walk both toes out. We're gonna do a little, a few little Kali's right here. So you'll inhale, exhale Kali. Trying to go low, inhale, exhale Kali. Knees open, belly in, inhale, and exhale. Two more, exhale, last one, inhale, Exhale, hold. Arms open, shoulders, chest open. So the tailbone is down. A lot of times we want to lean forward here. Try to keep a, a long spine. One more breath. Good. Inhale, open. Extend the hands like a star. Left toes will go walk so they're pointing to the back of the mat. Right toes come in. Triangle to the back of the mat. So inhale, lengthen. Exhale, down. Again, the body stays lifted. So you're lifting through this right side body. It's staying in line with the right hip. Maybe look up towards your right hand. Micro bend in the knees. If you're like me, you have a tendency to hyperextend. Great. This is not an easy pose right here. Good. One more breath. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, reverse triangle. Lengthening that left side of the body. And then come back to neutral. We'll go walk the feet outward again. Moving into another goddess. This time, we're gonna come over to the tippy toes if you're able. So you'll inhale here, and then exhale, goddess. You can either stay here, or you can rise up into the tippy toes. Maybe even coming into jhana mudra, so connecting the index and the thumb together. This is the mudra of wisdom, knowledge. Good, feeling those legs shake, that's good. Maybe sinking a little lower. Spine is long, belly is helping you out. One more breath. Good, inhale, lift up. We'll go walk the feet so they're parallel. Bring the hands back to the hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And then exhale, fold forward again. This time we'll reach the hands back between you. So I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see what I'm talking about when I say fold forward. So a lot of times here, we lean back into the hips. So try to shift the body weight forward. Really press into the outside of the feet and then bring the hands back. Bringing the hands 
back, drop the crown of the head, maybe reaching a little bit closer in line with those feet. Really pressing forward. Walk the hands back in line. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold. One more little fold like that. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, lift up. And come all the way up on your inhale. All right, one more Kali goddess right here. We're gonna walk the feet outward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, goddess. Good. Holding shoulders back. So what I was saying right here, a lot of times we have a tendency to do this. Tuck that tailbone in and down. So you want the spine to be neutral. And the knees are open and line with the toes. Three more breaths. star look up <sighs> exhale walk both feet back to the top of your mat so you're in mountain I'm gonna bring your hands into your heart center <sighs> from the strength of your legs <sighs> the stability Try to press into your your right foot and come into eagle pose Garudasana so the left knee is going to bend forward and cross over the right leg. You can stay here or you can even hook. And then the right arm comes on top of the left. So either the back of the hands come together or you intertwine the arms all the way. Shoulders down, elbows and hands out away from the face. Good, really pressing into that right foot. Pull that belly in, tailbone down. right by your ear, the left hand comes to grab your left foot. So staying here in your Lord of the Dance, or you can pull the belly in, press that foot into your hand, and shift the body weight forward. Find your gaze, your dristy, always helps you in balancing. Good, and relax. And exhale, lower all the way down. Do the opposite side. So pressing into the left foot, the right knee comes over. It helps for me to bend the left knee first, and then cross, and then wrap that bottom leg. This time, the left arm will come on top. Good. So shoulders down, elbows and hands out away from the face. If this isn't working for your arms, just grab opposite shoulders. that belly in, tailbone down, so that reminds us to stay rooted as we move and bend and twist. Good. Releasing the left arm comes up, right foot comes back into your right hand. Either staying here as you find your dristy, your gaze, or shifting the body weight forward into your Lord of the Dance. to pose to Dasana again. Hands from the heart center. Take a full breath here. Inhale, reach up. And then exhale, fold forward. Drop your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Walk, step, or even hop those feet back to a high plank. Or drop the knees. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. To your knees, pressing into your left hand, hinge the left toes out to the side, and then open up the right side of the body. Ardha Vashustasana. 
full lift from that, that right side body. So you're lifting, the belly's pulling in, press into the back foot, let it help you, and then spread the fingers, pressing into the left hand. Lift your right leg, hold. You can either stay here, or you can grab that foot with your hand. Opening the quadricep. Opening all the way into the hip, IT. Good. Lengthen your right leg. Drop it. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, gate. Pulling the belly in and try to find length here. Inhale, lift up, and then exhale, come back down, all the way onto your hands and knees. So moving into the same thing on the opposite side, press them into your right hand, spread the fingers wide, into the palm and into the fingertips, and hinge the right toes out to the side. You can either tuck them under like I do, or you can let them be flat, and then lengthen the left side of the body. Staying here, option number two is lifting and engaging the belly a little bit more, or you can grab the foot with your hand and push that foot into your hand. Drop the left leg, inhale, lift up carefully, pull from the belly. And then exhale for gate pose. Extending, feeling that length through the right side of the body. Feels really nice. Good. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower all the way down to your hands and knees. Walk your hands out. And then on the next exhale, lower all the way down again. Hands come. Underneath your shoulders, pull the elbows back in towards the ribs. We're coming back into a cobra. So feet are down, pressing them down, pulling the buttocks in, pulling the belly in, and the head lift up. No compression in the lower spine, so everything is working to protect that spine. Shoulders stay back, down away from the ears. Hold. Exhale, lower down, bring the hands underneath the forehead and take a few breaths here. And then inhale, lift up, moving into Sphinx. So the elbows come underneath the shoulders, spread the fingers wide, pull the belly in here. So same thing working in the low part of the body. The buttocks is engaged, the legs are pressing down, and the belly is pulling towards the spine, gazes forward. One more breath. And lower all the way down. Take about three breaths here. You can move your hips a little side to side if that feels nice. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders and press back into downward facing dog. Inhale, extend the right leg up and back. Bring that knee into the wrist for pigeon. So we're going to take an upright pigeon today. But you will have option to lower down. So before you, you move and you immediately want to melt down, look at your right foot, make sure it's flexed. If you need a, assistance to get your hips a little more square, so they're facing straight forward, down and forward, you can place a blanket underneath your hip. Flexing the right foot, look back at your left foot, make sure that it's in line with your knee and with your hip, so it's not turning one way or another. Just staying upright right here. You can stay here. Or if you need to lower down and take more of a restorative version, you can. Otherwise, pull the belly in, 
lift up. Hair is driving me crazy today. And bring your hands into heart center. Pull that belly in so there's no compression in the spine. If you do feel that compression, then drop your hands back down. You can stay here, lower down, or move it to any other version of pigeon that's in your practice. You want to tuck that foot in. Two more breaths. Okay, that foot, let it go. If you're lowered, walk your hands back up so you're upright. Pull that right foot towards the, the hip. Rock onto the outside of the right hip. And then swing the left leg around. Bring the foot to the outside of that right knee. Inhale, lengthen to find that long spine. Hug that knee in. Then exhale, twist as you continue to hug the knee with your right arm. Pull the belly in, lengthen the crown of the head up, and maybe look over your left shoulder. And press that left big toe down. Soft gaze. Come back through the center, and then exhale, a little counter twist over to the right side. Always complementing our twist. Rock onto the outside of that right hip again. Swing your left leg around. Drop the hands. Tuck the back toes under. Exhale back downward facing dog. Nice. You can take one more flow here if you want. You don't have to. Inhale, send the left leg up and back and coming into pigeon. So the knee comes in towards the left wrist. Flex your left foot. That will help it from going numb, honestly. Look back at your right toes. Make sure they're in line with the ankle, with your hip. And then rising up. So pull the belly in, engage the back of the leg, engage the buttocks. If you're gonna sit up, if you're gonna lower down, then go ahead, soften. As low as you want, you can take a different um, variation on this side that you do on the last side. That's okay. So flexing that foot. If you are seated, either stay here or you can bring your hands into your heart center. Engaging the back, pulling that belly in. Finding your breath. And stay here or find on pigeon variations. So if you haven't seen it and you want to try different options that I'm giving you, it's a, it's a really fun one. Good. Two more breaths. And wherever you are, you can drop that back leg. If you're lying down, then walk your hands back in. Wiggle walk that left foot closer towards your your right hip bone, rock onto the outside of the left hip, and swing your right leg around, pressing the big toes down. Inhale, lengthen the spine, hug that knee towards the belly, and exhale, twist. Keep hugging that knee with your left arm. Lengthen the spine. You can turn around tilted one way or the other. And then look over your right shoulder. I know alignment tips can be a little tedious and annoying, but by practicing our, our proper alignment, we're creating a, a nice longevity for our yoga practice. We're protecting the body, but we're also learning in a proper way that we can truly benefit and continue the practice for our whole lives. Exhale, release, counter twist over to the left side. to that left hip again, swing your right leg, right leg around, tuck the toes under, 
Exhale back, downward facing dog. Your last downward facing dog of the day. Letting it go. Walk your feet towards the hands, this time to the outside of the feet. So toes point slightly outward, the feet are at the edges of the mat, and then lower the hips down with your knees. Pop, that's good. And bring your hands into heart center, using the elbows to open your hips. If your heels don't touch all the way, that's okay. If you're not able to go down as far, that's okay too if you're up here. We're working those hips, those thighs. doing go ahead and push those sits bones back behind you so we're creating more length in the spine more space to fold forward inhale extend up flex the feet long spine and then exhale fold forward trying to keep the heart lifted so the long back as long as you can and grabbing hold of the feet the thighs wherever your hands fall you can even just rest them down beside you and then folding inward keep the length in the spine Relax the face, maybe even close the eyes. Keep pulling that belly in. Think about tilting the hips back and bending from the tailbone forward through the spine. Relax the neck, relax the shoulders so the shoulders are away from the ears. Two more breaths. Inhale, slowly lift up. Bringing the knees with you. So rocking back onto the sits bones. Let the legs be parallel to the ground. For half boat, Ardha Navasana. So the arms are strong, shoulders are back. Pull the belly in. And lift, lift, lift. Sort of squeeze the knees towards the belly. Three, two, and one. Good. Drop the soles of the feet together. Pradhakonasana. Feet come together. Long spine. Either stay here, or if you want to fold forward, you can. Keep pressing the feet together, the toes together, and if you are folding forward, think about, again, lifting the heart to find a long spine as you come forward. For more intensity, pull the feet closer to the body, to the torso. For less intensity in the hips, then push the feet away. Three more breaths. Noticing the breath softening as we reach the towards the end of our practice. Rising up, bring the knees together and just squinch away from side to side. And we're gonna roll all the way onto the back. Sending the legs down. So you're in your almost shavasana. We'll do one more gentle twist before we move into our final relaxation. Hugging the left knee in towards the belly. And then with your right hand, pulling that knee over to the right side. You can even pick up your hips a little bit and move them to the left side of the mat as you twist. And then the left arm opens up to the side, either a cactus arm with that elbow bent, the arm extended out into a half T. And just breathing in. Feeling that release in that lower spine, the lumbar. Also all the way up through the torso, even into the belly. 
belly, the chest. You're closing the eyes. You turn the head towards the left side of the hand. Come back through the center. Extend that leg back out to meet your right. And then bending the right knee in. Again, you can shift the hips over. I like to do that. And then pull the knee over to the left side of the body with your left hand. Extending the right arm out to the side. Or cactus arms. And trying to keep the, the right shoulder down so you're grounding as you're twisting, lifting up. natural rhythm. And if it's audible, it's very soft sound, you know, no pressure, no force. Everything's just happening without too much stress on the breath. And then coming back to the center. This time, hug the knees in one time. If you would like to take a happy baby instead of your apanasa, you can do that. If you want to take apanasa, then just like I am, you can grab a hold of the knees, underneath the knees, or even onto the shins as you pull the knees towards the belly, the shoulders and the neck relax. Or if you want to move into ananda, but not the last and the happy baby, grabbing onto the outside of the feet, underneath the the knees, as you spread the knees wide, flex the feet and then rock a little bit side to side. And then taking a short shavasana, so extending the legs out, hands down the side, you maybe palms are facing up. If that's too vulnerable to open, you can rest your hands on your belly. Closing the eyes, really feeling yourself soften into the mat, soften into the space. While we've honored the strength, the courage within us today, now it's time to honor the softness, the receptivity. chest and the belly rise and fall in its natural rhythm. Settling in to stillness. So all that is moving is the body responding to the gentleness of the breath. Just letting thoughts come and go. nowhere to be except right here right now you can stay here for a few more minutes moving into the meditation part of our practice or you can gently wiggle the fingers wiggle the toes bend the knees Roll over onto the right side. And pressing up with your hands, with your forearms, finding a comfortable seated position. Stay with your dominant leg in front or moving into a half lotus. If you're lying down, that's perfectly fine. If you want to take a seated position, you can find that jhana mudra again. Palms are facing up and connecting the finger, the index finger to the thumb. Relaxing the face, eyes are closed. Wherever you are, just watching the breath move in and out. Our meditation practice is about being with what is, watching what arises, and watching it go. So thoughts will come that is totally natural. Try not to get attached to those thoughts. Try not to get attached. 
attached to any emotion that also arises, just being with what is, observing it, and then releasing it. Reminding yourself when you feel a little less than, you feel a little worn out, worn down, that you have the strength within you, the strength of the goddess, courage, you can face obstacles, and also be really gentle, really at ease with yourself. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you. Namaste.